Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Holy Toledo, who's that good looking? Whoa, man? who's this guy? <laughs> Must be some new Hot guy. Commodity. Eh? Hot commodity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, girls, line up. Well, so, uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm the new guy I guess on this and uh, I've been guiding out here for the past year. Yeah, whatever you do, don't shake too much. But you get, uh, uh, you get the cameras moving. Got you, man. Yeah, yeah. We got uh, one of my go-to guide minnow patterns that I've been using for quite a while. It's worked great out here. It's worked great back home for me. Um, it's on a Waddington shank, and then uh, you're running it with a like a, almost like an intruder style type pattern, right? Tell them a little bit about yourself too, Johnny. You're you're new to the team. You, you started with us last year. I kind of threw you under the bus. Yeah, you and, did. And uh, you <laughs> <laughs> get out here and get to work, yeah, eh, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw you to the lines. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I grew up back in Alberta and been guiding out there for quite quite a bit, on and off for a few years on the Bow River and other various rivers around Alberta, stocking brown trout on the small creeks. You know the thing is, is that the flies that you guys are using back east are they're pretty similar to what we're using here. Yeah, in a you sense. Know, that's that's like a big meaty bull trout fly. You know, like for where you guys are fishing too, right? And we so, when we fish them even bigger than this back home yeah. on some of the rivers. And you know what? I don't know why we don't do it here too. You know, like I I, ne I never do. I know like there's some guys that are throwing like six eight inch. Oh, I think it's more to do with the salmon fry patterns out what here, right? Yeah, you know, exactly. it's what they're eating. So not big out here isn't necessarily the answer, right? So. Yeah. You got so such a variety of different fry patterns. Absolutely, man. So I mean, back east they're probably eating a little bit more like. Well, they get fish. white fish and all that stuff, and that's their prey. That's what they're. Yeah. That's what they're after. So. So yeah. here we're going for like a salmon fry. Kind of a salmon, salmon fry, a smaller smolt Stolten thing. Something. I tie these things up in various colors. I mean, I play around with it quite a bit. I, I love using ice dub and and making the bodies out of that. I'll even use craft fur or whatever it is. I really love using rabbit strip as a tail on them. It just, it adds some weight, helps you get it down. Yeah, it sucks casting it, but casting for bull trout sucks in general anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> chuck and duck, dinner. right? Yeah. Add <laughs> weight and go and deeper and deeper and to get into them. Chuck so. and duck, that's so true. So we got uh, here, this guy. There. We'll leave it in there, we'll give it a quick, I'll go down one camera here and you guys, you, you can have a quick look at, give her a slow roll there, Johnny. Slow and roll, then, uh, okay. And then we'll Gotta loosen this friend's eddy off, but yeah. I mean, we add some pink in there, whatever colors you think. That thing is beautiful. That's gonna, that's gonna get them, man. Unfortunately, when you tie on the Waddington shanks, you have to tie them with your vice sideways like this. There's just no way around it because the way the shank is. But I mean, and then we've got various other colors too. Straight white. You can add blues, different colors to it, and it works great. Even just straight up olive green. Yeah, dude. Money. I've I've caught steelhead on these. Yeah, they'll eat that up. Big time. So, the first item we have to use is these Waddington shanks. There's many shank manufacturers across there. They all work. I like the shorter ones, 20, 25 millimeter. That's great. Great size for these. You want to tie them bigger for you Alberta boys, well then maybe go up to a 30 or a 35. So we'll grab one of them bad boys and throw it in the device here. Yeah. So, you can see they're flat and they've got an upward bend. So I stick it in the vise like so. Now your vise normally sits like that. Normally you'd put your hook in that way, but these guys, because they lay that, you have to put them in like this. So I grab it in there. Now, the thing with the shanks you really gotta watch is you don't yard down on them too, too much because they will bend. And then for the, the hook loop, I use this bead wire and it's like 24 pound test. There's, companies that make it some guys use braid I do not like braid because you get the dangle that hook will dangle down and when those fish come in they'll miss it this wire keeps it nice and straight and right behind the fly so what I'll do is I'll just throw on some thread here and get a base built up you gotta watch with these shanks because there's a little gap there and you can break your thread off in there if you don't do it right Johnny, you're a natural, my friend. You're a natural. <laughs> Fifteen years of tying will get you, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the big thing with this wire is is making sure that that loop is long enough coming off the back, but you don't want too long either. So you want just long enough to get your hook through it. I just got to find my. 
So I use these owner no skater hooks and I'll right here. Yeah. These yeah. guys, little egg hook, they're barbless. All right. And so the big pretty, thing pretty with this awesome wire hook, sharp is, heck, is making we don't put sure these that, that loop is long them. enough coming off the back. But so you, you got to make sure too long that wire is coming off the so back. So you want just right long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner no skater hooks and I like the measure with that. Just find something you have. hook, they're barbless. So the big thing with this wire is making sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. We don't put these on loop is long enough coming off the back. So you got to make sure that wire is coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So I use these owner clay. No skater hooks and I like the measure. So you lay it in like that. Just find something you have. One of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to get your one of my better techniques for number four. So you got to make sure that loop is long enough coming off the back. So you want just long enough to
Senyo's Fusion Dub. It's like a peach color. It's been pretty good. And then I'll use like Ice Dub and Pearl or White or you can get some other long fiber dubbings out there. They'll all work. So I got some here ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll prep this up for my dubbing loop first. I kind of just pull it out and get a nice little stack going there. And then I'll grab some of this Fusion Dub here. The peach color. You don't need a lot of that because it's just a little hot spot. I don't know what it is, man, but these fish love hot spots. Yeah, it took you a while to get over that, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And then, where's my dub and loop spinner? Now, everybody has their favorite tool for doing dub and loops. Out of everything I've tried, these guys have worked the best. They're heavy, they spin, they do the job. So, take your your thread here and pull it off and create a loop put it over and then I like to spin this around it a few times pull it up lock it into place wrap your thread forward put your dubbing loop tool on the base of it and then I just kind of hang that there and then I'm gonna do just a kind of a poor man's whip finish here just Happage. keep it still then I'm going to bring my cradle over, throw my bob in there. And then, I don't know, everybody has their way of doing dubbing loops. I absolutely love having wax in there. It helps secure that stuff in there. So yeah, just any type of fly tying wax will work. Then I grab this dubbing loop pile. We'll do a video later on another day. And I'll show you guys some composite loop stuff where you're adding more materials than just dubbing. but. So you stretch her out in there, make sure she's all laying nice. Then we grab that dub and loop tool and we give it a spin down at the bottom. You can't see it, but there's yeah, it's hard to see. see. The gist of it. You'll get the gist, yeah. So we got that nice and spun up. You can see that there. So again, where's where the rodeo, rodeo, rotary vice comes into play? Rodeo vice. Ro rodeo. Well, it's kind of like a rodeo, I guess. And then you just spin her around, building up that body. Nice and nice and tight. Nice and tight. Get that hot spot in there. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out how much you need. There no. is like a full-on ratio. I know. I know Zach is like the dubbing loop master. I'm pretty darn yeah. good at him too. <laughs> he's, he's got it down to like measurements. Yeah, well there's a thing. OPST yeah. brought it out and those yeah. guys over there were really good with it. They, uh, Jerry French come up with it and he's got a little tool that... Yeah, you measure it out like an inch. It won't but it all this much. depends on the length of your shank too, right? So sure. as we get into salmon season, we'll do some videos on some of my salmon flies and stuff that I tie. But we just lock that in there anyways. And then I'll just build this out a bit, strengthen it up with some thread. Okay, so we got that rabbit there. We're gonna end up folding that over, but there's one thing we have to do and that's we're gonna pick this out a bit, get that belly sagging down a bit. Did you, have you ever seen the popsicle trick before? With the I've Velcro? been doing with Velcro for years. It works good, doesn't yeah, it? I got one of my old ones over here somewhere. I don't know where the heck I put it, but. I've had that thing, I made it with an old piece of Velcro like five years ago. They're awesome, aren't they? It works great, man. Yeah. Some I mean, guys will some guys will use a little yeah. wire brush or a pick or something. They work too, but there's nothing beats Velcro on a popsicle stick. It just gets the job done. Bang for your buck, eh? Okay? Yeah. Cheap, easy, and it works. So then we gotta grab this rabbit fur and bring it forward and we gotta figure out where we're gonna tie it in and break it there. So somewhere right around there. Yeah, you gotta use spit, that's the only way, man. Some guys they got their little jar of water and they dip their fingers in it. I never tie with rabbit because I can't stand the fine furs, man. Gets like, in your nose and then oh, in your mouth when you're licking your fingers. It gets in everything, man. I'll find it like in my belly button after time with it like i don't know how the hell it gets in my belly button but <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. navel so we got that locked down in there and then what i'm gonna do is come in here somewhere where the heck is it ah we'll just use these scissors i have some really fine pointy sandals ah there we go the nice titanium sure. 
fancy scissors. We'll get in there and we'll just trim that nice and close. Is that Dr. Slicks? No, these are even more expensive. Really? You don't even want to know. I do want to know. I want a pair. They're like a hundred dollar scissors. Should I drop them on their tip? Yeah, well they've already been dropped on their tip, so. Oh, okay. No, that was, there was a guy, I think his name was Ralph, and Steelhead Society was... Oh, that's right, they did a big fun... You bought these from Yeah, them? I bought two pairs of them. Yeah. And they have been the bomb. They've got this nice little blue... Adjustment knob? Crystal adjustment knob in it. Great scissors, man. But, when it comes to this stuff, they're not necessary. Alright, so we got that laid in there. Now we're going to go back to... the. Sorry, we're gonna put this step in here. I almost forgot the most important one. We're gonna use some Superfly Crystal Flash. I like all kinds of things, like this Crinkle Mirror Flash is great too. That's also a Fly Angler distribution product. They're good, man. Yeah, and there's Robbie. some in blues and whatever. We'll use this stuff though on this guy for now. So, I don't know, three strands of that. You don't need a whole lot in there. Cut her off. little tricky to do here get that so we got that so what I do is cut it in half find the, the halfway point sticker in there you want it to lay down on the sides of the fly so get that there like so lock it in on this side and then we grab the, the front end here and we pull it forward and then lock it in and keep it on the other side lock it down And then I'll grab it and pull it back and just make sure it's not going too far past that tail. And if it is, we'll just give her a little trim. Done deal. And then, now we're going to go back to that dubbing. So I've got some Senyo's laser dub here in light olive. And then I've got some ice dub in pearl. So what I'm going to do is grab some of this pearl. It's got fairly long fibers. You want stuff with nice long fibers. So you grab it like so and then on top there you lay it on top in front of the eye. It's kind of in between there. Lay it down and lock it down with two turns. That's it. And then we flip this sucker over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Maybe not quite as much though. layer over like so then what we do is we grab the front stuff and we pull it forward we bring that thread wrap over in front of the eyes Whoop! sorry guys she's a little close a little tight in here yeah takes a little bit to get used to it but okay so then once it's wrapped and it's forward we're gonna split that we're gonna move one forward lock it down and then we'll take that bottom one. Oh, there we go. We got some, some fur into the mouth. Rabbit. Lock her down. That's that crazy. Is. That's crazy how much that ties it together. Okay, and then we've got that green. We're just going to add a little contrast to it, make it look a little bit more like a real bait fish. Well, one thing I noticed, man, is that like the green seems to be on the back, eh? Yep. They're, oh, you look at a trout or anything it's like dark that. Dark on top and they got on the belly. Dark on top. So you don't even need to put anything below it. We're going to we're gonna do that here. So we're going to take some green, just a little bit, not much. Just like I say, a little bit of contrast. Lay that in there. And then we're going to take some more of that crystal ice or what is it ice dub pearl there and we're gonna just do on the bottom one more time just balance that out looks good man same thing pull it forward get him flipped over the right way you just build your head up here nice and clean. What thread are you using there? Uh, it's Semperfly Nano Silk. Yeah, that's really nice stuff, eh? It's hard to break. It's a pain to cut if you don't have sharp scissors. But I, I get sick and tired of breaking thread off 
especially when you're tying meaty streamers and stuff. I mean, the delicate dry flies, it's not so necessary, but it's still a great material. So then we're just gonna whip finish this guy off. Some guys will go in with a UV cure after and kind of dress that front end up a bit to keep those fibers laying down. But I'm not a fan of that. I like leaving it the way it is because... Would you get into dubbing with uh, the UV? It seems to make it a little crusty, man. Yep. You know, and I, I'm not a fan of the crustiness either. Yep. Lay it out. But we will use that, that UV cure just to, to lock in that thread. Mm -hmm. uh, Unlike the dry flies and the nymphs, you can just use a little bit of lacquer or something. These guys get a little bit of abuse. They're banging around on the bottom. So, just give her a little coat. And then, hit her with the UV light. you got to get yourself one of those solar res lights, dude. Yeah, this one's been working. When it dies, we'll buy a new one. Oh, we got to hit a solar res. We'll get you one for free, buddy. They sponsor our show. Yeah, buddy. So then we go back to that, that size four hook. Some guys like twos. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I, I like the fours. This is the tricky part where everybody seems to get messed up. It's very important that that hook point rides up, not down. Because if it's riding down, you're going to hook these fish in the lower jaw. And we don't want that, especially when we're playing the catch and release game. So we'll pull that back and those eyes are going to make that fly ride down. So we want to take that off, that hook, you can see, and then we'll just push her through to the end of the loop and then we'll pass that loop over the hook. It's kind of hard to show this on camera. You can, you can see, see. Then we'll and then we'll just straight out, push her through. See? I actually got that one backwards. Look at that. To the end of the loop. So we'll just we'll toss pass that, that back loop through. Over the hook. It's kind of hard to show this Spin on Spin her around and then do it. There we go. Now we're the right way. Pull her out. Now you can see that that rabbit fur is kind of in the way of the hook. It kind of helps hide it a bit. Some guys do like to lock that rabbit strip down on the hook. I don't because, you know what, if you want to change that hook out because you got it hooked on a rock or a stick and it got dull, you can still do that then. And there she is. Damn. That's a great time. Uh, Curtis says uh, this guy's a good addition, and I have to agree with him. Oh, That's a really nice time. Johnny. Yeah, man. So they work great out on the rivers. You Sometimes got, you got poked on public TV. There, I did. Huh? I got I got <laughs> poked, but you know I'm used to it. I'm a guide, so yeah. I get poked all the time by hooks. It's just part of life. Yeah, as long as you're getting poked by hooks. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, these guys, any of them, you know, they're great on sink tips. Um, I sometimes you got to add some weight to help them get down. I mean, if you're fishing for bull trout, you want to be banging off the bottom of the pools, and that's where you're gonna find them. We're gonna, yeah. You know what, we'll go back up so you can sign out. They're up top there too, so you're on the top camera. Yeah, anyway. guys. We can give that guy a little slow roll. Look at that, make it flow, baby. Yeah, she's a good little tie. I got them done in all different colors. They're, you know, they work great. Different maybe contrast. some days, man. Maybe one of these days we'll get into tying the stuff that I really like tying. Pull her up to the big, the top camera there. And all we like yeah. doing. I tie a lot of classic flies. Roll it over. Let's see that split wing, man. Can you see it? Yeah, perfect. Look at you that know, thing. these are time consuming. They take about two hours, but maybe when we have some time one day, we'll, we'll sit down and do one of these guys up. It's a classic D with some more modern colors. And, uh, you know, it's an eyeless hook, so you're using silk gut to attach it to. And, uh, yeah, some crazy feathers in there. One of these days, we'll get down to one of them. What do you figure, man? I think that's uh hey i think that was a good show you got anything else for us tonight or is that oh, the one, we one might we might we might we'll see i think ethan's gonna do something here eh? yeah yeah ethan. yeah yeah young, maybe young handsome charmer here is gonna be up next so maybe i'll come back with something after we'll see here yeah i threw down two it's you could throw down two oh absolutely sure. hey we're not 
we're not in a rush. No. Okay. I buddy. don't guide till the afternoon tomorrow, so we can sit here till midnight, <laughs> man. <laughs> I gotta work tomorrow, though. All right. Okay, so Bye, everybody.